you know, this is a new thing for me. It's something that's been on my heart. Um, I'm doing it for a class, but I know it's on uh, the beginning of something uh, so much greater. Um, I'll just start with a prayer out of Ephesians um, 1, uh, 16. I'm praying this prayer not only for the folks that are watching this and that will watch it, but for myself as well. Um, Ephesians 1, 16, we're going to read through uh, 18. It says, um, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. I want to read it in another translation. Um, that was the New King James. I want to read it in um, the uh, NIV also. It says, um, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Again, we're praying right now. Uh, so that you may know him better. Um, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. You know, like the little light bulb will go on in your heart. Uh, in order that we may know uh, the hope to which he has called us, I'm pluralizing now as we're praying, in order we may know the hope um, to which he has called us, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. In Jesus' name, amen. So that prayer, we're praying that the Spirit of God would move, uh, that the eyes of our heart, uh, the eyes of our understanding uh, would be enlightened, that the little light bulb would go on as we go through this lesson, that we would be uh, divinely enabled. Um, that the power of God would help us to see things that we might not have seen, that the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation uh, would enhance not only um, uh, or anoint me to teach, um, but anoint you to receive what's in his word. Now, the scripture talks about um, uh, that the things of God are, uh, you know, um, how does it say? Uh, that we know that we are divinely divinely received you know the Holy Spirit enables us Jesus, uh, that we know that we are divinely divinely received you know the Holy Spirit enables us Jesus said that, that uh, it's possible to uh, hear and not hear you know the hearing they would not hear seeing they would not see um, but that the, the things of God are supernaturally received and there's a lot of times when we're reading the Bible where we're just, you know, kind of using our own natural abilities to try to figure it out. But right here it says, you know, um, that, that that God can give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Um, here it calls it, yeah, spirit of wisdom and revelation. Not only that we um, uh, that we would know him better and that uh, the eyes of our understanding, the eyes of our heart. You say, my heart has eyes. Yes, your spiritual heart has eyes and ears. Uh, for you to hear and, and see the things of, of, of God. And, and, and again, Holy Spirit is there to help you with that process. And we need it to be able um, to, um, we need it to, it able to, to, to be able to get the word in a way that it's going to be profitable for us. So that was our prayer, and that's the way we started. I want to jump right into uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So while you're finding that, uh, this lesson is about, uh, about grace um, and um, it's not a beginning lesson on grace. We kind of um, we're starting in on one particular aspect of grace, Ephesians two eight and nine, um, and we're talking about the, or the first point that we're going to make is that grace must be received. Uh, the grace of God has been released, but it must be received. You know, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna take our time with that because that is so foundational uh, uh, to the discussion of grace. Um, but we're going to start Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and we'll break it down from there. Um, well, actually, we're going to start at Ephesians 2, 7, and um, start there. Um, and if I can find it. Here we go. Um, that in ages, in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. I need to underline that in this Bible. That's great. The exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace... You have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That was New King James. In, um, in the NIV, it says, um, in, order, in order that in the coming ages, I guess I'm going to just start from verse 5. I don't like the way that was chopped up. Um, let me start in uh, verse 4. Because of his great love for us, 
God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by his grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. There it goes again, that riches of his grace, not just grace, but the riches of his grace, um, expressed in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Um, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. That's a key point we'll come back to. And that not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by work, so that no man, no one can boast. Okay, uh, so right now that's a particular um, part of uh, grace to be saved. Okay, God um, has so many expressions of grace, and we're not, we're not going to go into all of that this time. But one of the expressions of grace, because it says it here, it says that he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So one of the ways that God expressed his grace was Jesus Christ. We, and, and if you ever studied grace, we said grace is um, unmerited favor, something we didn't deserve. is something that he decided to give even when we were undeserving. The scripture says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, um, And that was an expression of God's grace. He wanted to redeem us, redeem fallen man from what Adam had done. And in his plan, in his um, divine plan, he, he, he sent Jesus Christ uh, to redeem us. So the grace for salvation was released at Calvary. You know, Easter uh, was a couple of weeks ago, and um, it, 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 the, the, the whole Easter story is about the grace of God who would send his only begotten son to die on the cross for us so that we wouldn't have uh, eternal punishment in hell. That's, that's the grace story. And that grace was relieved, released on the cross. But as, I, as we saw, um, for those who go to the church I go to um, two weeks ago, um, at Easter, there was this press, there was this, this thing in the spirit, this, uh, this warfare that was going on as the preacher had preached about the grace that had already been released to Calvary. There were people struggling to receive it. You know, in order, in order to, all of us who are, are Christians, at some point, there was a, uh, I'll just use this, what is this, my tape thing. This represents the grace of God that was released. You know, this thing, God released it at the cross of Calvary, and it was there for me. It was there for me in 1983, and at some point in 1983, I decided to receive it. You know what I'm saying? I, I decided to receive it by faith. And in, in, uh, verse, um, let's see, going back to Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 8 says, For grace you have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God. So it was a gift of God, but I had to receive it by faith. At some point, I had to do a Romans 10, 9 and, and, and confess with my mouth and believe in my heart or John 3, 16 and, and, and release my faith to believe that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and make that confession and, and receive him and, and by faith make him my Lord and let him be Lord over my life. That, there was a grace that was available, but I had to receive it. I had to receive it. And... Um, you know, and you going back to the analogy of the thing on Sunday, where there was people who were sitting in the audience who um, hadn't received it. The grace was available; it had been released. The preacher even preached about it, but people weren't responding to get that grace. And so, one of the the main point here is that the grace of God must be received in any area. You know, and this is so foundational. You know that you got to understand that the grace. That Hebrews four sixteen talks about come boldly unto the throne of grace that may we, that we may receive. A mercy and, and help in the time of need so the grace is available but we at some point we got to go and get it and we get it go and get it by faith it's not enough to say oh yeah I know Jesus Christ died from the dead and rose from the dead um, and that grace is available for me I have to receive it by faith you know we talk about salvation you know faith without works is dead the work in that case people respond to the altar call they lift their hand they stand up or whatever they walk to an altar they make a confession they there's an action that goes with that faith but the whole point is that grace must be received. Okay, in our in our group last week we had um, uh, a young man who uh, was struggling in a particular area of forgiveness, a, a, a sin, um, and right next to him was the person who had created the same, committed the same sin to a greater degree. And here one man was tormented, and right next to him was somebody who had done the same thing to a greater degree. It was in peace. What was the difference between the two men? Well, in this case, I'll use a different uh, object here. But one man had received the grace for that particular thing, grace for forgiveness. I'll call this grace for forgiveness. And the other man, he realized he had committed this sin, 
and never asked for forgiveness so he was right there in the moment dealing with it this person already gone through